Bamboo Labs Core XY 3D printers are probably the fastest desktop retail units that I've used to date. Their print speed and quality are thanks to a combination of its motion system, auxiliary cooling, input shaping, and tool head. Out of these, I'd argue that its biggest limitation falls with its hot end. Don't get me wrong, it's a fairly solid piece of hardware, but compared to some others out there, its max flow rate is fairly mid-range. Well, E3D realized this and teamed up with Bamboo Lab to make an official high flow hot end for the P and X series. And they say it can improve flow by a massive 60%. E3D sent over a pair of these high flow obsidian hot ends and today we are going to be diving into them. We'll take a closer look at the hot ends, go through the installation, and see how they compare to the stock ones. So with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Jumping right in, this new hot end is available in both 0.4 and 0.6 millimeter sizes. Physically, they're nearly a one-to-one -one in form factor to the stock hot end with a few visible differences. The bit of heat break sticking out of the heat block has the same rainbow sheen from their Obsidian Revo nozzles. This is the E3 DLC special coating that covers the heat block and nozzle providing additional abrasion resistance along with a non-stick layer. I haven't printed very much with PETG lately, but I am a big fan of the non-stick coating to prevent buildup. The nozzle on the E3D hot end is also a different shape than the stock bamboo ones. One thing I didn't notice initially is that the location of the thermistor is different on the E3D hot end. I'm not sure the reasoning behind it, but it did make putting the hot end clip on a little trickier, which I'll touch on in a bit. With the same form factor and nothing obvious on the outside, you might be wondering how it actually increases the flow. This is a great question, and it comes down to the unique geometry on the inside of the nozzle. If you're familiar with the Bontac CHT nozzles, this works in the same way. E3D licensed the CHT technology from Bontac, which was created by 3D Solex, and the hot end is using this to achieve much higher flow. Stefan from CNC Kitchen has a fantastic video on these nozzles that I will have linked in the description. In summary, there are multiple channels inside of the nozzle, dividing the filament as it passes through. This increases the surface area in contact with the filament, allowing you to melt more material quicker. Before we install the new hot end, let's do some flow testing with the stock hardware. We'll be using the built-in max flow rate calibration test found in Orca Slicer. I'll have a link to the video guide I put together previously for a step-by-step -step on how to use this for your printer. For my test printer, I'm starting off with the P1S, but other than connectors, the hot end for the X1 series is identical. For materials, I'm using Bamboo Labs Orange PLA and Red ABS. I wasn't entirely sure what range should be tested, so I went with 15 to 30 cubic millimeters per second. I'm used to seeing gaps in the filament when the flow gets too high for the hot end, but with the PLA it had sort of a weird inward curling instead. The ABS was much more in line with what I'm used to seeing, and as soon as the flow became too high, I started to see gaps in the walls. For the PLA, I measured up until the curling started for a max flow rate of 21 cubic millimeters per second. I figured the ABS performance would be a bit better, but it was very close and the first obvious signs of under extrusion appeared at 22 cubic millimeters per second. Now that we have our baseline, we are ready to install our new hot end. Removing the old one is a piece of cake. Two screws are holding it into the tool head and two cables need to be unplugged from the board. The new hot end comes with a silicone sock, retention clip and thermal grease, but it doesn't include the heater or thermistor. I understand the reasoning because the X and P series have different connectors, but it really would be nice to have an option to get those pre-installed. Your choices are either to order a pack of them from Bamboo Lab Store or reuse the one in your current hot end. I don't have any plans to go back to the stock hot end, so I figured that I would reuse what I already had. I hadn't taken apart the hot end before, but Bamboo Lab has a short video showing the process. There are two screws holding the fan to the heatsink. Then underneath the silicone sock is a clip you need to slide off to gain access to the heater and thermistor. The heater is just loosely in place so it's simple to remove, but my thermistor took a little convincing. Installing on the new hot end is just doing that same thing in reverse. The kit comes with thermal solution, so I squeezed that onto a Q-tip and applied it to where the heater and thermistor will be. It's pretty messy, so if possible I do recommend wearing gloves. Then holding the thermistor and heater in place, you need to slide the metal clip on. This is where I had a bit of trouble. 
Since the thermistor is on the opposite end of the block, it was tricky to get the clip back on. There's a wider section on the clip for the thermistor, but the one included with the hot end is the exact same as the stock one. This meant when I slid the clip over the thermistor, it didn't have much space and wanted to pull the thermistor with it. The good news is that the clip has plenty of give and you shouldn't have to do this more than once unless something fails, but I'd like to see a modified version of this clip provided with the kit to make installation just a little bit easier. Once back together, install the two screws into the hot end and plug the cables in. There's no PID2 needed or anything else before you can start printing. I then reran the flow rate tests of 15 to 30 cubic millimeters per second with the same exact filament. Both ABS and PLA completed the entire test without any signs of under extrusion, which I was really happy to see. For the PLA, I then ran a 30 to 40 test and looked at the test. I definitely saw the quality was degrading, but it didn't fail like I had expected it to. So I then ran a 40 to 50 and finally a 50 to 60. Each test, the results were worse and worse, but I was still surprised to see that there were no big gaps until that final test. For the sake of measuring, I used the layers just before the first signs of quality loss, which was 32 cubic millimeters per second, a pretty big improvement from the 21 we got with the stock hot end. For ABS, when I ran the 30 to 40 test, the printer actually threw an error. This was a nozzle temp error and one that I had not seen before. To rule out a glitch, I reprinted and mid-test once again the temps dropped and the printer paused. Due to the PLA not having this issue, I wasn't really sure what the cause was. Wanting to rule out user error, I pulled the hot end, stripped another stock one down, and swapped all of the electronics over. Running the test again, it gave me the same error. A little puzzled, I thought maybe it had something to do with the connectors on the tool head board. So I grabbed my X1 Carbon and swapped everything over a third time. This time, it completed the entire print, so I moved on to run a 40 to 50 test. During this test, I saw large sections of under extrusion and the X1 ended up having the exact same temperature drop right around the end of the test. Looking at the ABS tests from the P1S and the X1 Carbon, I could see the printer temp error location from the P1S lined up exactly to where I started to see the quality degrade on the X1 Carbon. I'm not sure why the P1S decided to call it early instead of pushing through like the X1 Carbon, but the max flow I was able to get before this is 34 cubic millimeters per second. The only thing I can think of is that above that flow rate, the filament is not being melted fast enough, so some of the heat is leaving the heater with the filament. And since this continues at that accelerated rate, it quickly drops the hot end temps. Normally this would just lead to the extruder skipping steps, but I'm wondering if because of the geometry of this heat block being very narrow, it has an easier time pulling heat away from it. Since it can reach 300 Celsius, you could play around with trying to counter it with more heat, but I'm plenty happy with going from a maximum of 22 to 34 cubic millimeters per second. So what are my thoughts on this hot end? At 60 pounds, the high flow obsidian hot end is much more than the standard hardened steel one from Bamboo Lab. The combination of the anti-stick coating and increased flow is really nice to have, but whether it makes sense for you really depends on your specific needs. Although the hot end can output a sizable more amount of filament, it doesn't mean you're going to be able to take advantage of that with every single print. For smaller prints or prints with lots of attractions, you won't be getting up to speed or a high enough flow to see a sizable difference. However, if you're printing lots of large pieces that allow you to reach higher accelerations, or you want to print with larger and wider lines, this hot end can make a sizable impact on your print times. Also, if you just want to push the limits of your machine and play around with higher accelerations, I can see this being a really nice upgrade. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to answer the majority of your questions. If you do have any other questions, let me know in the comments down below. And as always, if I don't know the answer to those questions, I have no problem reaching out directly to E3D to try to get those answers for you. If you're interested in finding out more or picking up one of these for yourself, I will have links down below in the description. At the time of recording this, they were actually completely out of stock, so I'm hoping they've got more coming in soon. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel further, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.